In Spacewatch, the world's largest airplane took flight for the first time Saturday. The 500,000-pound strata launch jet flew for more than two and a half hours. It reached an altitude of 17,000 feet over California. If you're wondering why we're calling this Spacewatch, it's because the aircraft is designed as a platform for launching rockets that would carry small satellites into space. The designers say their goal is to, quote, make access to orbit as routine as catching a commercial airline flight is today. Bill Harwood is a CBS space consultant and joins us now from Merritt Island, Florida. Bill, thanks so much for being with us. This is pretty remarkable. Can you explain to us why this is so significant? Well, really, if you just think about just the size alone for a minute, uh, it's an impressive feat. Uh, the company Strata Launch went out and bought two 747 jumbo jets from United Airlines. They took the engines off, they took the wheels, the landing gear off, a lot of other equipment. And then they built from scratch a new airplane using those engines, landing gear, and other components to, to build this, as you say, rocket launch platform. It's the biggest airplane in the world ever uh, when measured across the wings. You could put a football field uh, on those wings from tip to tip, and they'd still hang into the end zone. Uh, so it is an absolutely ginormous airplane. Uh, and, of course, the first flight, a maiden flight of a vehicle like that is an, an impressive event. And by all accounts, it, it went off fairly well. All right, let the record show that Bill Harwood used the word ginormous to describe this plane. Uh, let, me, Absolutely. let me ask you about how this would work. So this is designed as a flying launch pad. As we look at that plane, can you just break that down for us? What are we talking about here? Sure. You know, if, if you go back to the uh, 50s and 60s when NASA was launching the X-15 rocket plane, for example, they would carry it up to altitude under the wing of a B-52 and they would drop it from there. The idea is the same thing here, that the lion's share of the work of a launch is getting out of the lower atmosphere. That's where the air resistance is the thickest. You have to do the most work to overcome those aerodynamic stresses. So the idea is if you can carry your rocket up to 30,000 feet, 40,000 feet, whatever, drop it there and then light the engine, you've already got the hardest part of the launch behind you, mm -hmm. and the airplane did that. So that means you can carry satellites to space with smaller rockets. Uh, and you don't have to worry about the weather so much. You know, as, as you well know, Elaine, watching launches down here, you know, weather, weather scrubs launches all the time. Mm -hmm. An airplane can simply fly to a clear spot and drop the rocket and get the rocket and get the satellite launched. Uh, so there's some clear advantages to this and some big questions, too. Well, are other space programs working towards similar goals? Well, absolutely. In terms of small satellites, uh, Virgin Galactic has modified a 747 that they're going to launch a solid fuel rocket from under one wing that can carry small satellites to orbit. Uh, but what, what Strata Launch is trying to do is, is up that ante even higher. Uh, if you look at that giant wing on that airplane, they would launch the, they would carry the rocket up in the center between the two fuselages, mm -hmm. and they're saying they can carry a rocket that weighs almost a half million pounds off the ground. Uh, so it's a big rocket. They're designing a family of rockets that can be launched from this airplane. Now, whether there's a good business model for that, whether it will survive the competition because the competition's going to be heated, those are unknowns right now. But clearly, Stratolaunch thinks they're going to be a player, and it's going to be real interesting to see how all this works out. It really will be. I mean, when you think about, Bill, the current space race, is this a point in favor of the U.S.? Well, in the sense of the innovation that's being applied to a whole range of launch vehicles, uh, absolutely. Uh, you know, SpaceX, of course, is... is is their innovation has led to reusable standard rockets, as we all saw with the Falcon Heavy last week. Uh, other companies are innovating as well. We've got Blue Origin, which is owned by Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon, is building both suborbital and orbital rockets. Uh, the list goes on and on and on. And I think in terms of sheer innovation, uh, the U.S. is leading this new era of the space race, as you put it, uh, without any question. Now, the, the Chinese are very active. Uh, Ariana Spas, the European consortium, is building new families of rockets. Uh, but certainly, I think the, the bar has been set at a new level over here right now, anyway. Well, the late Microsoft co-founder Paul G. Allen founded the Strata Launch Systems Corporation back in 2011. After this project is completed, what might be next for the company? Can we expect any other groundbreaking designs? Well, first, they've got to perfect this one. You know, this is, this is no small thing to, A, build an airplane this big, 
get it where you can repeatedly fly it safely as you need to do with multi-million dollar payloads. And then they've got to launch payloads. They've got to develop the business case, uh, show the community that they're you know, serious players in this and get payloads to orbit. That's the bottom line. Uh, what might happen down the road remains to be seen. There are notional studies at Strato Launch about launching even larger rockets, even uh, small space planes that could someday carry people. Uh, so all of that's down the road a ways. I think, I think really uh, in the near term, it's just, it's a matter of seeing, uh, can they in fact launch rockets on a, on a schedule that allow the company to be profitable and move ahead with some of those more exotic plants. Really is mind blowing to think about the possibilities here. Bill Harwood, Bill, thanks so much. Great to see you. Absolutely.